Uh, today I'm going to make a video on my V-Strom 650. I've been having electrical issues with the headlight not working. And also I'm going to take the tank off, do the fuel filter, and probably give the air filter a clean. So I'll go through the procedure of taking the tank off first. That way I can get to access like all the wiring and stuff because with the tank on you just can't get to it. Get these covers off under this one here. This one has got Velcro behind it and it's got little hooks so you've got to actually push push it backwards. Okay, so on this top plastic, you've got these little buttons. You've got to push that in, and then you should be able to pull that out. Voila! All right, so for the tank, you've got two bolts, Allen bolts up the front, one at the back. So now that is pretty much ready to come off but what you've got under here is uh, you've got to disconnect the wiring and the fuel fuel line there's one wire there goes to your fuel pump <clears throat> um, there's a couple of breather hoses now the hardest one is the fuel line connection what you've got to do is squeeze the two tabs in. Um, I usually just squeeze them in, push it on a bit, and then pull it back off. If you need a bit more room, get a block of wood. You can raise it up a fair bit higher than what I've got it now. All right, so that actually came off pretty, pretty easy. Wiring, fuel line, two breather hoses, and you should be able to pull it off. That's how you get to your air filter, your reservoir tank, you can get to your top spark plugs. So I might actually take one of them out today and have a look at it. I'm pretty sure they were new when I got the bike. Um, just show you on the tank. <clears throat> now this, this is the blue connection that holds your fuel line on. All you got to do is push those ends in. Just give the line a push on and then pull it off and it should come off easy. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is change the fuel filter. So I've gotta get the pump out of the tank. Um, this is the fuel filter. You can see the part number there from Suzuki. That little sucker there actually costs $47, believe it or not, just for that. But if you need it, you need it. All right, so it's not really hard to get this out. Just prop your tank up, nice and steady. Alright, so that's what your fuel pump looks like. And there's your fuel gauge. <clears throat> now you do have to dismantle this to get to get to the filter. Take these three screws undone. This end will slide off. There's a couple of O-rings in there. Sometimes they're pretty tight to get off. Um, I'll undo it and see how we go. So once you've undone your wiring, um, yeah, unplug those, get them out of your way. That should come off.
all right just a little gentle bit of prying finally wants to let go as you can see it's got a big o-ring there another one on that bit that's what really gets stuck oops some sort of valve let's remember where that goes now the fuel filter is actually right down the bottom here believe it or not so what you got to do next is just slip that housing I'm going to take that o-ring off make it a little bit easier to get to so just slip that oh crikey slip that housing off That's where your uh, filter is. There you go. She's looking uh, pretty worse for wear, this old filter. Looks pretty dirty. There's a comparison. Nice new white one. So that's, that's your motor and your fuel pump. This just sits on the end like so. It's quite a tight fit. Pipe there has got to go down beside the filter. Then it's just a matter of the reverse procedure. <laughs> okay, so don't forget to put your O ring back on. Okay, so once you get that back on, it's a matter of putting your uh, sender unit back on it. And this is where it comes in handy in making photos because without a photo I would have already forgotten. It's pretty basic. Uh, to my diagram. That brown goes there as like an earth. Okay, so green was on the right. That one is a little bit loose, we're going to tighten that up. They do have a pretty good rubber ring around the seal, so you shouldn't have any trouble with leaks. So yeah, once you get a lot boat back together, just slip it back in the tank. Remember which direction you took it out. All right, so you got eight, eight screws holding this cover on to expose your air filter. So what we gotta do is undo all of those. I'm not actually gonna change this today. This one's fairly new, it's just it got a little bit dusty because I do a bit of bush bush riding. But I'm actually gonna go one step further because I'm gonna take this air box off. There is several plugs wiring I need to get to that are underneath it. So if you wanna watch follow along a bit more or demonstrate how to get that off all right so to get to the clamp on the front throttle body I think I've got to take this off and find a really long allen key to get access straight onto it so I'll take that off and have a look as so there's a couple of 10 mil bolts there's a clamp right up the back there. I don't know if you can see that, but 
to get a direct line on it that's it's fairly hard to get into because of this here bracket um, let's see what allen keys i've got hopefully i've got something long all right so these clamps are a free three mil allen key and the front one is really really hard to get to uh, a couple of plugs to take off and then you should be able to lift that that um, air box out Couple of vacuum hoses. And one big breather hose down and underneath. So that's what she looks like without the airbox. So yeah, if you want to get to your plugs, there's like the main top ones. The front one. I would say you'd probably have to take the radiator out because there is not much room down there and you've got one on the side here and there's one down this side but anyway while I am under here I have to check every plug and wire figure out why my headlight is not working could be one of these is dirty I don't know. I'll just go for them, check them all out. I have pulled apart pretty much every plug under the tank, inspected everything, everything's clean. No dirty connections. Um, and one thing I did notice, this is two fuses here is for the headlight. And as you see over here, we have power. Both sides of the fuses. I know the fuses aren't blown, but there seems to be no power coming back up here for uh, the headlight circuit. So I'm going to try and trace the wires as far as I can. I've pulled every wire, every plug up here, checked all that. There's got to be a break somewhere, I'm thinking. A broken wire or something. Anyway, I'll keep looking. So I'm just going to take off the tank bracket. Just to see, get a bit more access. There is a few plugs down there still that you can't get to. So I can see from the fused wire, is that white wire is the same as that. Um... I'll get the test light, maybe check it up here if there's any power. Okay, so I'm still having no luck in finding the issue. One known cause on the V-Strom is that the headlight actually run through the starter switch. Um, I'll take it apart and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you just got two screws underneath. Make sure you've got a towel or something to um, catch any falling parts. All right, so when you <coughs> excuse me, so when you push your starter motor in, starter button, the headlight power lights are these first two, and then when you push that button, it bypasses those, cuts that off, and then hits the starter starter circuit. So as you can see, there is your four points. Now quite often, people have said these get dirty and don't make a contact, but um, looking at this one, it looks like it's brand new. So you gotta be very careful. Things could pop out here. All right, so I've just turned the ignition on. Power there. Power for the headlight. So 
So my problem is not in here. So I've got a orange and red, yellow and white wire. Have power up here, so that's not the problem. Okay, something just happened. I have headlights. So I have traced this wire back to this plug that comes from the starter switch. It seems I have a bad connection in here because when I wiggle it, the lights go on and off. So that is my problem. Thank goodness for that. All right, I'll pull that plug apart and inspect that pin because I think that is my problem. So yeah, this orange and the red stripe wire power comes from here through this switch up to your uh, starter. Just gonna test it again before I put it back together. She is working. I'm wiggling her. My guess is that connection just was not in there properly. Somehow I fixed it. So now I've got the job of putting this back together. Um, yeah, so this isn't a common fault is with the starter switch. Some people, uh, I've read up, they buy a relay kit that bypasses that switch. I think they call it uh, an Eastern Beaver kit. Sounds more like a porn film, I know, but it is um, a wiring loom already made up you can find online. Actually, before I go, I'm just going to take out a plug and see what sort of condition she's in. Well, she looks like she's uh, burning pretty good. I believe these plugs were pretty new when I got this bike, so I'm not going to worry about the rest of them. But that'll give you an idea.